welcome to episode 21 of the Picky Busters podcast. Um, today's Picky Busters is extremely important because over the next hour, we're going to prove definitively that older brothers are always smarter than the young'uns. <laughs> and on that note, I'd like to introduce our guest, my brother, Lewis. Hello. That's Hello, very Lewis. quiet, very, very laid back, Lewis. Very chilled, yeah. Along with the usual suspects, Fran. Hello. Hello. And Matt in New York. Hi, hi. How's it going? Good. So we're going to start by getting to know Lewis a little bit. Um, I barely know him myself, so I'd be good to get these questions worked out anyway. So I've got four questions for you. Can you tell me, please, your favourite album of the last 12 months? It was going to be, it was going to be the record I put on this playlist, because that came out <laughs> okay. in like October or something. Hi, okay. But I will say um, uh, it's probably the El Sweatshirt record that you didn't like but Matt liked oh. so. <laughs> okay got, so I was really into that we're a right. minute and a half into the podcast and you've already been wrong yeah. once <laughs> so, <laughs> well I'll let you know because I've got I've been listening to all the latest podcasts you've okay done, okay and okay you know about so Moses Sun I'll we'll get to that we're gonna, he's gonna kick off right? he's ready to kick off this is good yeah. perfect perfect so, all right so first album you ever bought well, it was probably some shit like crazy frog or something I think yeah. Crazy Frog. I mean, the I Crazy frog. frog. What's Crazy Frog? Ah, uh, uh, I mean, you are old, uh, but I, even I know that. I'm yeah, Crazy I'm Frog. Surprised. I don't, don't know what that you is. Just you are tell me. Stop you saying that. Lewis. Stop just the rendition of Crazy Frog. <laughs> Thank you. Back out. Stop just saying Crazy Frog to me and tell me what Crazy Frog is. I mean, there's nothing else you can say about Crazy Frog. <laughs> it, it, I think there's probably move on. There's no other way of explaining. Fair enough. End of conversation. It was, it was a ringtone. Okay, it was a ringtone. Brilliant. That became an album hit. Wow. Okay. Number one single. Number one single, that's the one. Shocking. But I will say, if I... I probably got that when I was six, so it's not reflective of my music taste now, yeah. right. <laughs> necessarily. So six or seven years ago you got that, I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay, so best gig you've been to in the last year? Yeah. Um, I thought about that one. I thought it was forever, so I was going to pick Port's Head in 2015. Is that just rubbing with Nick that he's not seen Port said live? Oh, really have. oh, have you not? No, I, I've seen oh, him. Oh, Utter yeah. bastards. <laughs> yeah, really. That is good live, aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm really sure good. they're pretty poor. It's really all live violent. And Tom York came on stage with them. Yeah. No, I can't remember. That was Massive Attack. Anyway, so the best gig was probably Sanfa at Roscoe the Festival. Oh, wow. Okay. It was good. Nice, nice. You nice. had this massive rack with all percussion on. Sick. Okay, nice, nice. cool. And worst gig you've ever been to in your life, in your this very one, short life. This one was very, very easy because uh, I have seen Young Thug in concert. Oh, wow. And that mm. was utter trash. Because <laughs> <laughs> nice. he basically plays... 30 seconds of every tune and just when it gets to the good bits he rewinds does loads of air horns and it's like <laughs> start a new tune yeah and it's <laughs> fucking it sounds like the guy Sabah was going to say that doesn't sound much of our experience at Sabah have, oh, really? have you heard Sabah yeah, so really, yeah we were yeah. really excited about going to see him me um, Nick and Tom who writes for the website and uh, and he had a DJ called Dam Dam who just shouted are you ready for Sabah every two minutes? And then pressed an explosion noise on his keyboard. And it was he must have done it 50 times. Oh. No exaggeration. At the end of the gig, all we were doing was trying to work out when he would next yeah. do the explosion sound. Oh, it's like, so three, bad. Three, two, one. So bad. So bad. So many times. It's unbelievable, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say it was the worst gig I've ever been to, but it was it was, it was yeah. the biggest disappointment I've had. It, it might be. Time. Yeah, it might yeah. be. Yeah. The biggest difference between the album yeah. and, the, and the gig, yeah. Okay, so thank you. Now we know you thoroughly. That's great. Thank you very much. I want to go into the list of the albums we're covering this month. So... They are These New Puritans with Infinity Vibraphones, Lucy Rose, No Words Left, American Football's LP3, and then uh, Lewis picked Abba's Arrival as the classic, Dave's Psychodrama as his new release, and you are going to introduce us to CTM's Red Dragon. Um, before we get started, I'll just mention that in the last six weeks or so, we launched the Picky Bees website. Yep. Um, which is pickybs.com um, and it's fantastic, possibly the best thing on the internet, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> it is the best thing on the um, internet. Yeah, I was going to say possibly, I, I don't want to don't no, be arrogant. It is. It's only, other than Crazy Frog. 
Okay, yeah, it's the right, second right. best thing on the internet. Top top two uh, place to be on the internet, yeah. So please check yeah. it out. Uh, and also you can see us on Twitter and Facebook as well, Picky Bastards. Picky Bastards. At the there? Picky Bastards yes. on Facebook and at Picky Bastards on Twitter. Thank you. Okay, so let's get started. Um, I wanted to ask a couple of questions and we'll start with Lewis. Um, so of the ones we talked about on this list, um, what song or album had the most joyous moment for you on the entire playlist? That's easy. Okay. <laughs> Obviously, that's ABBA. That was Wait, so fucking... Nice. The intro to... The first, like, five tunes of ABBA is brilliant. The f- and Money, Money, wow. Money is a fantastic tune. I, I can't believe I've never listened to more ABBA in my life. And we really started a podcast so, with ABBA just to put yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently we are, yes. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was, I was going to be... I was very pessimistic about that. Okay. Album going in. I can't think why. Because no, exactly. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, I just think the songwriting is great. Honestly, okay. I think "Money, Money, Money" is a tune that will. It just sounds like it could have come out a couple of years ago. It would be fine. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It wouldn't I'm be. Surprised. Starting to wonder if you've ever heard any. I know you're a musician, but have you ever heard any music? Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> this this album is, I would say, really, or at least, at least up until the fifth tune, then it dips a little bit. What's the fifth tune? Do you remember? Money, money, it? money. Oh, after yeah. money, 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 it sort of yeah. drops off. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. And like it's got Dancing Queen, Knowing Me, Knowing You, all the hits. Okay. <laughs> great. I all like hits. it. I like it a lot. Okay. I was surprised. I was surprised. I was gonna hate it. I thought. And I know you only picked it to annoy me. Yeah. yeah. That was the reason. Yeah. So I was. I was like, I'm actually quite surprised by that response. So you yeah. say you like it a lot, right? Serious question. Are you, will you listen to it again? That is the question. Mm. I might. I might. You're right. That's the question. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I'll listen to the entirety because there are some weird folk tunes on it. Mm. That The title track is weird. Yeah, yeah. that's the yeah. folk intro, <laughs> yeah. folk interlude. I think what I've heard, what I've heard is that uh, the two guys who write the music, Bjorn and, uh, what's he called? Oh, I can't remember the other guy's name. Is it? Sven. It's or Borg? It's, they're both Borg. B, aren't they? Yeah, Borg right. or Berg or yeah, something. something. I wasn't just yeah. being... Yeah, yeah you were just being... <laughs> <generous. laughs> I, <knew. laughs> I just thought I knew his name. <laughs> it's something close to that. It's one of them two are really into folk music, and you can hear that on the record as well. Okay. They're like, sort of the... They've got the beards for it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they write the whole the entirety of it, which is why some of the lyrics, like, sometimes it's... The women are singing, like, oh... Yeah. Why would a guy like me do yeah. stuff like that? Like, it's funny. But I honestly think up until the fifth tune, and then there's a couple after that as well. Um, that are good as well. Okay. 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 All right. So, so Lando has got a Fran, why don't you give us your thoughts thing. on ABBA? Are you going to me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I mean, I don't know how to reply to that. Um, I mean, nobody's going to surprise anyone to say that. I don't, have, I don't have an awful lot to say about this album, to be perfectly honest. I mean... I think it's the least I've ever listened to any album on the pod on the podcast playlist. Um, Seriously? Oh yeah, absolutely the least because I don't think I ever made it through until I listened to the album um, in its entirety. I've listened to it all in bits, but I couldn't sit and listen to the entire album. I had to sort of listen to a few songs, go and listen to something that's actually good, <laughs> and then come back. I mean, I. Just mm, think they're the most true. vapid musical act in the history of music. Honestly, I just don't understand how anyone listens to them. I mean, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you, I'll agree with you that the lyrics are quite, usually quite annoying. Yeah. They're not really. And just to back up much. how vapid they are, I mean, they've got a song on this album called Dum Dum Diddle. Yeah. That is a title <laughs> of a song. Yeah, but still, but still, you can't argue that they don't write know how to write good songs. Like, well, what does that mean to say know how no, to write good songs? Really, the way What's I that? mean songwriting, like you're taken. I feel like they take you on the journey through the song. You're like, you're not, you're not. It doesn't feel awkward. It's still they're all fits together. together. You think it all like, fits together? It has an arc. Is that what yeah, you mean? It flows it together. I feel I like see. it flows together, especially the way they just faded out every song at the end yeah. they, they've run out of ideas oh, I can't I can't Matt, from Matt's comment Matt hates fade outs maybe we should go to Matt on the fade out uh, yeah go for it Matt what do you want do you want to say more oh sorry Franny you're done I'm done mate yeah, I've yeah, got go nothing to it. say about this band or album <laughs> go for it Matt I, yeah I ignored the fade outs in this because the rest of it is just, just pure pop classic in this I I already liked ABBA two votes in favour I already like <laughs> 
I already am. Uh, I, I love their great hits. I think, I think we should start auditioning and, new podcast members. And <laughs> knowing me, knowing you is my favourite ABBA song. Mm. And so, yeah. Is that because you like Alan Partridge, though? Because you can't like it as a song. <laughs> it's great. Oh, fuck off. Oh, this is just, uh-huh. it's, it's, it's like shiny pop. It is nothing more than that. But it it kills that genre. That's horrible. Nothing, I, I, that's an interesting phrase to use. It kills that genre. <laughs> it kills that music. music. <laughs> 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 um, okay, okay. Plus, plus uh, like, I generally think like their voices are really great. And yeah. I, like, I like listening to hearing them sing. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, I thought it was great. And I'm really happy Lewis picked it because I had a lot of fun. No problem, mate. You two need to yeah, get together. Nice one. <laughs> Pumps to other. <laughs> okay, is that all you had to say? Is that I it? Can, yeah. I can, can I, okay. I can say a negative if you want. Go on then. If you like, the why did it have to be me blues tune on the record is... Oh, it's a bit weird. I've got to say, that's pretty shit. <laughs> that's your only negative yeah. about the other yeah. album. <laughs> that's, one of the, that's one of the worst. And Arrival, the title track, is sort of shit as well. But I've spoken about that earlier. That, yeah. I'll, but those are okay. the two worst on the record. On okay, the so are you ready? We've we got two votes in favour, one against. All right. I'm very curious, Nick. There's right. absolutely no way in the world so, that you write this out. He's going to slate it. Go on. I could be all kinds of like post-ironic hipster about this. And I could like tell you, even though you'd fully expect me to hate it, that like, like somehow it's kind of turned turned me around, you know. But I'm happy to sit on the fence and say, on the miserable side of the fence, and say, I this is completely unlistenable. Yeah, this is absolutely (laughs) yes, Nick, atrocious. (laughs) It's the absolute definition of so many terrible terms of our music. So I put wrote a couple down. It's lyrically totally facile. Yeah. Like Dancing Queen, for example, is so vacuous, like Know Me Knowing You. It's so cheery and chirpy, like Fernando. It's, that's just so <laughs> great. It's so <laughs> annoying. So, to be honest, I was going to say as well, when I looked into it a little bit more, I couldn't, I'd i forgotten, in fact, that they started on Eurovision, yeah? That's how they yeah, actually relaunched yeah. yeah. their career. So, we're really talking about the two of you voting for the quality of a band that started on the Eurovision yeah. Song Contest. That's I mean, how, do you, how do you both feel about Gina G? <laughs> Box Fizz, they, they're good, weren't they? They're like one of Matt, the it wasn't selling, a real question. <laughs> they're like one of the biggest selling groups of all time. So I'll tell yes. you that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're just miserable. So a queen. Like, you're just miserable. Well, look at the name of the podcast, because I'm yeah, happy to I sit know. with the miserable people on this like, one. Because the yeah. reason why this record is so good is because it's, it, it, amongst all these other records, it's, it's actually... Cheery, the cheerful. <laughs> yeah. one. So you enjoyed it because it's a, it's next it's to some miserable no, record. I was happy. I was happy. I was so looking forward. No, he's to got that. the he's got the ring endorsement of the word cheery. That's just <laughs> really that's, that's <laughs> it all in, doesn't it? It's so it cheery. Was, it was a quite a turn listening to this after yeah. listening to Dave. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you needed it. I feel like it was right, necessary right. after all those heavy. I literally at the end of my notes, I just wrote <laughs> in desperation. I just wrote. Goodbye, Abba. That's all I can <laughs> to say. <laughs> Hopefully, goodbye, and I'll never come across it again. But how do you think? Why do you think Dancing Queen's a bad tune lyrically? Oh, God. I think Dancing Queen's a. It's sort of like a dour just, and sort of like. Um, I mean, it's a Dancing Queen, Young What's the Lyrics? It's just lots of words that rhyme with Queen, isn't it? Just any <laughs> word they could get that rhymed with Queen, and then they just put them in a row. Genius, but like, compared to the other stuff on it, it's not much worse than any of the other. I think maybe the thing with Dancing Queen, I know that it was you who said that, but probably the reason Dancing Queen was one that stands out as particularly annoying is because you've heard it since I was one till this year. Every time I go in a room, I was at a wedding on Saturday and it was played there. And every time I go somewhere, <laughs> Dancing Queen's playing. And it was shit the first time. And I don't understand how. Even when I was a child, I would be sat there going, nah, nah, turn this off. <laughs> this is terrible. And yet, 30 years, 35 years later, I'm still hearing it and you made me listen to it for a month. So, oh, I'm yeah. so happy I picked this. Yeah, <laughs> so you really are risk now. Okay, so uh, let's go to the next question. So Fran, which album changed most in your opinion from your first listen to your most recent listen? Well, this was a difficult question for me because it was most of my opinions stuck on this on this list so it's not a major change that's not acceptable I'm afraid it's but it hmm. was a question. minor change with uh, Lucy Rose's No Words Left because mm-hmm. I kind of took a little while to get past how similar it sounds to Laura Marlin yeah um, okay. Laura Marlin's one of my absolute favourites um, but Lucy's Lucy Rose's voice sounds like her voice the song the tone and the music similar but 
once I got past that a little bit, I kind of realised that I, I like this album probably as much as I like a few of Laura's, Laura Marner's last few albums. And, and that's a compliment from me. I don't mean that in a negative on Laura Marner's last few albums. I thought this was really good. I like the sparse to the album. I think the song sounds sort of almost simple and sweet on the surface, but there's a real darkness beneath. Um, and one of my favourite pieces of music is the song that's called Just A Moment, which is just a, just her strumming the guitar for about two minutes. But it acts as kind of a breathing space. And You've just said about ABBA being like the lightness on this playlist. And this was a dark album about sort of like anxiety, about depression, about a lot loss that she's been through. So, yeah, but for me, I thought there was, you know... To be fair, though, Fernando was quite depressing, wasn't it? Yeah, that's not, that's not trying to spin in it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> but in a different way. <laughs> Are we just, is ABBA going to come back at every bloody question? But, yeah, I mean, I think it's a real consistent album, tells a story. Uh, I think, for me, the two highlights were probably the confines of this world and song after song. And I think that's partly because of what they contribute to the album as a whole. So I think there's Lucy singing about... Um, in confines of this world when she sings it really i really don't mean to bring you down but i need someone to speak to yeah. it feels like she's addressing the listener and there's just so much honesty in the album and then song after song when she sings about um song after song about me and my misery which is kind of what the album is and it's quite an honest way of looking at it and it feels to me like just some this whole album something she really had to get off her chest and stuff she needed, really needed to say and for some people it might be a bit too depressing and i wouldn't be surprised to hear those comments but I love depressing shit. So mm -hmm. okay. I loved it. I thought it was a great album. Okay, let's go to Lewis. What do you write? So you mentioned uh, Just a Moment. Yeah. And I put down for that, it was long and boring. <laughs> 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 so I thought it was definitely the low point of that album. That's a great little it breathing on, space. Nah, it went on for way too long. Also, uh, my that was probably my least favourite tune is probably Confines of This World. It's okay. definitely down there. Up there for me, I do will say though it was a decent album. I it took me a while, and it was also the one that changed the most for me. Okay, because I started out. I don't really like the singer songwriter, just the guitar and vocals. I mm. find it boring sometimes. But I mean, we're not going to agree on that. Okay, because that's <laughs> most of my record collection. Music collection. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, but she did switch it up. Like the opening tune does have. A few, I mean, she switched it up a little bit. Has some weird like electric guitar stuff on. Mm. I like um, conversation. The first track. That's yeah. treat me like a woman. Yeah, it's got a lovely, nice old guitar on it, electric guitar on it. Um, I don't know. I found I don't. I'm not. I wasn't too into the lyrical side of it. To be fair, I don't know. But generally, it was fine. Oh, sorry. Fine. <laughs> it was fine. fine. It, it was, was fine. fine. It was not as good know. as ever, but it was well, fine. Was but I just think fine. I just think she sounds better when she's just singing ooh and ah like. Then instead of singing lyrics, <laughs> I honestly, yeah. I sound harsh. That is so harsh. It, okay, that was harsh. That is pretty harsh. That's allowed. You can be harsh if you want. You can be harsh. Like an... You can like Abba and you can be harsh about what was actually oh, a very it... high quality album. It's, fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's just because within like, in the, in the first tune within 30 seconds when she goes, uh, it feels many moons away. I hate the way she says that. Says that many wow, moons away. Wow, that's very specific. Very specific. That's, that's, that's some specific close reading things. right there. See, I really I like the way she says that. Though. I so hate but that. That's, that's where that, that's one of the bits though. When I was like, she's so similar to Laura Marling because it's yeah. a very similar delivery to Laura Marling. Do you like? Do you know Laura Marling or oh. no? Don't listen to her. You'll fucking hate her. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right, so uh, shall I jump in or Matt? I don't know. I have yeah, one right. specific thing. Oh, you had one. Yeah. Go on, go on, Lewis. Was the transition from conversation to no words left part mm. one was brilliant and great and and smooth and nice and okay. but that just confirms my point that she sounds good when she doesn't sing. <laughs> <laughs> good guitar player, that's what it basically. You don't like the guitar, guitar the song that's just guitar, but you like it when she doesn't sing. You I mean it's no when she sings ooh and ah and like like vocal, like, like, harmonizing and stuff. I like that bit. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. All right, so um, I'll I'll jump in, shall I? Um, yeah, go for it. So for yeah, for this one, uh, I'll try and uh, ignore what Fran said, and I'll just say what I wrote down, which was, um, as far as I'm concerned, you can see this album as um, a really interesting sort of spin-off from Laura Marling, mm. um, or you can see it as derivative to the point where it has no purpose. Um, and from the very start of this album, from Conversation, as far as I'm concerned, it's the latter. This album is so derivative of Laura Marling 
I just don't know why I don't just go and listen to Laura Marley. Is it instead. derivative though? I mean, you can't. Uh, she sounds like she can't help what she sounds like. She no, but it's voice. also musically and lyrically. But it's not her first really album. Really it's kind of just this. Yeah. Is, you know, it's, she's it's, a contemporary of Laura Marley. She's been around really. for as long as Laura Marley, so so should I dismiss Laura Marley instead because she's too much like? No, because suppose. Laura Marley's obviously a bigger artist <laughs> with a better back catalogue. You pick but, which one is derivative of the other. I don't mind. Well, I say they're so this similar. Sounds quite a lot like some of Laura Marley's early stuff. I'm not going to argue with that. I agree completely, but. Laura Marlin's gone in a slightly different direction and she doesn't do as sparse a music now and I think there's room for two people who sound as amazing <laughs> as they do. So I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Lucy off. Fair enough, fair enough. Night, Laura. Um I also, weirdly, also wrote about just a moment, um, because I thought the guitar work on it was probably the most beautiful stuff on the album musically. Um it was, it was really, really, really it. nice and it really sort of ha- made me pause I sort of drifted through a lot of the album and then it really made me sort of stop and think a little bit more about the album as I mm. got to that point each time um, so that really worked um, there were some points I don't, I don't actually write a track down, but there were some points where it ended up sounding uh, like almost slightly jazzy almost uh, in a way that I, I wasn't that comfortable with it sounded a little bit like kind of jazz pop or something right. I can't quite put my finger on it but um, no, can't, can and you? that stuff didn't really <laughs> <laughs> And that stuff uh, didn't really move me. So overall, um, as far as I'm saying, it just was a bit of a... Um, I felt like I'd heard it before, and what I'd heard before from Laura Marling was a little bit better. There's a big difference between her and Laura Marling, though, in that I think, actually, Laura Marling doesn't actually write that personal music. Like, she writes a lot... A lot of her stuff's based around, like, folk stories, and it's much more sort of... Okay. And I think this was a much more personal album than, than anything Laura Marlin's done, actually. Okay. Which is, is a point of difference. I'm willing to take that on. I, I mean, to me, it's um, it's just musically and, and kind of acoustically very sort of derivative. Yeah. But I, don't, I can see what you're saying about the lyrical content. Maybe that maybe that's true, yeah. Matt is also possible. a lot big Laura Marlin fan, so... All right, Matt, go for it then. What do you rate? Uh, well, I, I, I've i been a big fan of uh, Lucy Rose for a while as oh, well. Oh, have you? Okay. She used to be part of Bombay Bicycle Club. Oh, did she? Um, ah. Yeah, and she's... Oh, I hate them. Like, her old stuff is mostly... <laughs> Make your bloody mind up. <laughs> well, like, her old stuff is mostly, like, indie rock kind okay. of kind of edge to it. And she's gradually been getting folkier and folkier, and her music's been getting more and more sparse, and I like it less and less. Okay. And so I... <laughs> I yeah, I think compared to some of the other people, like, we've talked about Laura Marling, uh, there's another one, Chloe Foy, who I also really like, and mm. I don't think that um, Lucy Rose feels the sparsity as well and has the same intensity while having kind of less going on in the in the music. I don't particularly rate the music on this album. I think she's got a beautiful voice, but it just wasn't... It's got a beautiful uh, Laura Marling's voice. It's great. She yeah, it, just, Laura it wasn't voice, supported so. by anything. <laughs> It was just kind of, yeah, it was just a bit too quiet. And um, so I, okay. yeah, I just thought it was Turn all it up. <laughs> It's all about volume, yeah. Just press, yeah. press the just, increased just volume button. Volume. It'll be fine. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's the perfect album if you want to, like, have a conversation over it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's where the first one is called Conversation. Uh, yeah. I'm just, just giving you a hint. Just fucking talk over me. <laughs> I mean, I was like, I don't know why I'm saying Oh, that, that was dynamite. That's dynamite. Yeah, but good call. I, like, I recommend seeing her live. She's great live. Like, she's, her voice really, uh, like, comes out live, I think. Okay. okay. So, great. Cool. cool. Do that. Okay. So, uh, next question then, we'll move on, uh, is for Matt. Uh, which album oh, yeah. ends best? Um, which album ends best? Sorry, I don't know why I'm saying it. I just had not see yeah, that. I just repeated the question. It's not for me. It's fine. Right, Which carry on, Matt. Bad. Just ignore him. Um, so I'm actually torn between the two remaining albums for this. Um, but there's I'm three go remaining, three remaining albums. albums. There's three remaining albums. <laughs> there's three? Yeah. yeah. Do you actually just oh, do yeah. play this stuff? <laughs> one of them I'm just ignoring and hoping it doesn't exist. Um, <laughs> so to pick one of the others without giving away which one you're ignoring, then. I'm going to go with These New Puritans. Okay. Um, I just because it's great when it ends. <laughs> I really like this album. Um, I've liked pretty much everything these guys have done. Um, and I thought the end was really interesting. They kind of had the three ending songs were almost like two instrumentals tied together by this really long, claustrophobic uh, song, ARP, which kind of evolves and is in the way it's kind of um, really dense and kind of 
doesn't feel nice to listen to almost. And then this drum beat kicks in the end and suddenly it's light, light at the end. Um, and uh, yeah, I just really enjoyed musically that kind of journey. Um, and I think, yeah, like all in all, the album, I've, these new persons have always been doing kind of weirder stuff, um, but always been kind of interesting. And um, it was also interesting to hear that like this album is the first album I've listened to where they haven't got a full orchestra in behind. And it okay. made for like a more um, visceral sound. Like before it was always very uh, almost mechanical. And this uh, was much more intimate and much more visceral, I thought. Um, so I, I, yeah, I enjoyed this album a lot. Okay. Yeah. I think, go? Uh, should I go next? I'll go next. Yes, go for it. Um, so I am, uh, which I think is relevant, a, a massive, massive Attack fan. Uh, massive, and I massive think, Attack fan. Yeah, massive, massive Attack fan. And yeah. uh, I think um, the side of me that kind of loves Massive Attack was really addicted to this album because I think there's an awful lot of similarity uh, in the way they produce tracks and the way they deliver tracks. In fact, I did actually wonder at one point if the vocalist out of Mass of Attack, I can't remember which one, the name the guy's name now, was actually guesting on some of the tracks for this vocally. I thought it sounded like he was... I feel like I've listened that. to the wrong album. <laughs> we're talking about these new periods. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but... Uh, these new periods. What are about, yeah. Nothing. Anyway, just anyway. The two things, what well, the things that you're um, both saying, just... And there were some really good parts, like Into the Fire and Anti Gravity were like the yeah. highs for me. Um... But there's something a little bit uh, scary about it. And I suppose the best way I can describe it is that it's kind of like the way that Radiohead launched Muse and okay. uh, Radiohead's Machine like turned into like the nightmare of new metal. Like this band, in a way, are like a, sometimes at their worst, very melodramatic version of, of Mass Attack mm. that's like overblown and too much. Like some of the string parts, you talk about not having full orchestra. I'm glad they never full orchestra because they would have really overdone it with that even more so. I mean, they had, they had a huge amount of like swells of strings and cellos. And, you know, it's just like, it just came across sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes it's really melodramatic. So I think it's harsh to say, in fact, unless I think more about it, that it's like the difference between Rage Against Machine and New Metal, but because that's I think it's harsh. really shocking. But, um, but yeah, it, it was just problematic for me that, that they did sound um, like a kind of, watered down version of, of a band that I really love like a yeah. kind of mellowed out version or, but also with some like overblown parts so I don't know so the lows are actually I thought uh, Where the Trees Are On Fire mm. was probably the most melodramatic song of the, of the whole album um, I actually thought ARP was also pretty big like production wise and maybe too much but um, yeah so it, that to me that it was almost a frustrating listen in a way because I you know I, I wanted to to get into it and I did find it quite interesting and I, I can imagine playing it again in the future honestly some of it but I just do feel like oh, am, I, am I getting dragged into something that's like a tangent <laughs> from what I really am interested yeah. in you know? uh, that's what I worry about so yeah anyway that's that's my my view so uh, let's go to uh, Fran okay well I mean massive attack yeah. comparisons have thrown me completely um, <laughs> anybody saying they like this album has thrown me completely <laughs> because <laughs> For what is essentially an emo album, <laughs> and that's all it was, this left me feeling completely emotionless. I just felt so removed from it all the way through. And for an album like this, of this style, to be interesting at all, I think it has to have a real emotional pull in it. It had absolutely nothing. So I can barely tell you what a single one of the songs was about, about apart from some trees being on fire at some point. <laughs> no, I, I can't agree with that. There I was a know. bit about, there was the opening of the, of the first or second song about, like, uh, I'm Lonely, Let's Be Lonely Together. Oh, right, okay. I thought that well, was, I was coming to yeah, ahead, one go of go the ahead. opening songs next when um, they, they spend about a minute and a half listing chemicals. <laughs> and I felt like I was back in chemistry and fucking hated chemistry. So, um, yeah. It's a lot of fire. Yeah, a lot of fire. Yeah, he talks a lot about fire. Yeah, honestly. oh, yeah. yeah. fire because fire is so melodramatic, isn't it? Yeah. It's like yeah. fire. The trees are on fire. Yeah, the trees are on fire. Yeah. The trees are on fire. Yeah. Right. And yeah, there's a line on one of the songs where they repeat, uh, "This is where your dreams come true, your nightmares too, your nightmares too, your nightmares too." And nightmares yeah, this too, was my yeah. fucking nightmare. <laughs> this album was my nightmare. It was horrible. I hated it. I despised it. Okay, fact. so hold on. Really? These new Puritans. Abba. These new Puritans are Abba. Come on. Yeah. Abba. You choose ABBA over these yeah. persons. Wow! What? <laughs> what? This, I I feel like you listen to this. Because this is a dark album. I mean, you can't this say is, it's yeah. not dark. It's not dark. 
Singing it's about so trees dark. being on fire for f- four minutes. It's not dark. It's people who want to be dark. It's like Fred Durst level of dark. It's not dark. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, about with the Rage Against the Machine new metal thing. I was right with that about analogy. That, that's true. Yeah. If you go from they like want to be dark. a really good band and then water yeah. it down into a sort of... I mean, it's like... You remember when we listened to Paul Bearer it? on a really early podcast yeah. and they were like a, attempting to be dark, but they're just showing up against other people that do similar music to them and they're just... Yeah. Are much darker, and these are the same. Like, oh, look how dark we are. We sing about trees being on fire. You know, dark, mate. <laughs> All right. Thank you for that, uh, Lewis. Please do tell us why you love this album so much. <laughs> to be honest, I sort of just agree with Fran. Okay. On this one. <laughs> I can't lie. This album was pretty shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. That's it. That's I will shit. stop there. <laughs> I I could mention a few things. Um. His singing annoys me yeah. a lot. Yeah. It is extremely self-indulgent, this album. Extremely self-indulgent. Mm. Like, it's like, it's just, oh, group wanking all the time. Like, it's so, <laughs> so, like, it's so, 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 Oh, it's my so little so brother is trying to say that. <laughs> Don't cut that out. Don't you dare cut that out. It's Mate, that's going to be the tagline for this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's true, though. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if my... The opener did not catch me at all. There's two albums on this playlist that open with a fucking vibraphone. Because the, the American <laughs> football one opens mm. with vibraphones as well. Or, or maybe Schlockenspiel, I don't know. One or two, but it's like, oh, I don't know. I don't have much. Is that a good time to transfer to American football? Yeah, yeah. let's let's yeah. move on to that. Then, shall we? Yeah. Got more to say? Do you want to start us? I could start with. Yeah, I could start us with American football. I can tell you my opening notes for this was. Dad music, dad lyrics, and dad <laughs> delivery. <laughs> <laughs> this was such a dad album. <laughs> do you understand? Do you, do you get the answer? Oh, yeah. uh, 100%. 100%, yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. I'm not going to say um, any more yet because I don't want to give any more of my opinion yeah. away. But yeah, yeah, go ahead. So, I've only got worst songs on this, which is uncomfortably numb. I hate that tune. Yeah. And yeah. every time, and it's with this singer of fucking Paramore, I can't believe, with the Hayley Williams. Yeah, yeah. And when... They do this weird chase thing, and then it ends off with him singing, I've become uncomfortably numb. I want to, I feel sick, literally sick. Every time. <laughs> yeah. oh, so that's bad. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it's a reference to, to the Pink Floyd tune as well. Yeah. If which yeah, it, it is, then be. it must be. It's got to be a little bit one, isn't it? Yeah. Fucking, that is just blasphemic. <laughs> so, good vocab, nice. Thank you. Um, so um, that's that's your entire summer, is it? Dad music, dad music, dad music. Yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't, yeah, it's just dad music. I can't say much. I mean, all the arps, everything's so clean, everything's so boring, everything's so, like... Just, ah. Actually, I've got to say about the Puritans album that the, the drums sound so midi, which reminds me of this as well, because yeah. the drums sound so midi on this right. as well. Like, it might just... They might have I saw them on, I saw him on YouTube. It yeah, they might have, they might have just mm-hmm. redone. Yeah, but I did see him on on YouTube video um, for live performance of them actually with a drummer. I was, did wonder about that if they had a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they don't rekeyed it all, but yeah. Like, it's yeah. so so clean. Like, yeah. I desperately needed something yeah. that was <laughs> not clean and not. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah. can't. I don't think I've got more to say about it. All right, fair enough. Why don't we go I think I might step in if that's... Okay, go for it. Go for it, Fran. Because it's almost a carbon copy, really. I I I thought me and Lewis weren't going to agree on anything, but it's turning around as we get further through. I mean, I could just replay pretty much everything I said about these new Puritans album (laughs) for this one because it was the same album. It was exactly the same album. I don't know about that. I wouldn't go that far. It's not the same kind of music. It was just... It was. It was... M- music that's supposed to be emotional that just did nothing emotional at all and it was just overblown self-indulgent Greek ranking it was it was all can't it go was. there now he's already done that yeah. it stop <laughs> no, put the same thing exactly. now, like. <laughs> but it was it was the same thing it was the same thing it didn't give me any emotional impact at all I, I add, these people these are men in their what 40s or something yeah. and it just sounds like they're teenagers yeah 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 I mean, he's so earnest I mean, in the way he sings. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah lyrically, and lyrically, lyrically, there's nothing to really notice, I don't think. But he's yeah. so earnest in the way he sings that you think he must be saying something important, but he isn't. It's just words strung together with very little meaning. 
So, yeah, I've got nothing positive to say, so I'm not going to say much about it at all. <laughs> Other than, why the fuck are they called American football? They couldn't be further away from what American football is. The only similarity I could think of is that they're both shit. It's a yeah. shit band and a shit sport, so maybe that's well, why they call themselves American strongly football. Strongly disagree. But with that, the, that is with the, the only reason. I can, why are they called American as football? Disclosed. I don't know. They, they also, people don't call it American football in the US as well. It's just football. So, yeah, why, well, so why do they call American football then? <laughs> I don't know. Because they're dumb. <laughs> and then Matt, Matt can begin his commentary. Oh. Matt, go for it. Matt, any thoughts? Uh, I, I, I pretty much, going off uh, Lewis's dad music, I wrote middle age crisis or midlife oh. crisis on my notes. Because I was just like... This Nick's going to love this album, isn't he? <laughs> I, yeah, I, am, I, am a dad. I am a dad and I'm in my 40s, yeah. so yeah, yeah. This is Nick's album. <laughs> he chose it as well. Nick chose it for this list, by the way. Yeah, just I did. Out. Yeah. Well, we'll if you be blind done. for like the 50th time, I've told you that. Still your father. Okay, so um, go ahead, man. I don't know. It's just a bunch of kind of long songs uh, where they take themselves way too seriously and there's <laughs> no variety. And so every time I listen to it, I was just like, what? is it going to end soon? And it was only I seven finished, songs or something as well, wasn't it? And it was, yeah, we were all like having every, the same reaction to it. And it was so, it's only seven every, songs. Every song was like seven, eight minutes long, mm. and it was just nothing happened in it. So I was just like, yeah, I was just, I would get to the end and would not. The only thing I really remember is uncomfortably numb for the exact same reasons as Lewis <laughs> was talking about. Because I was like, that song made me uncomfortable and mm. not, not happy. <laughs> well, they nailed it with the title. <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, it's up to you, Nick, to rescue them. Okay, well, I've got 10 reasons why I love this album. No. <laughs> the first is I'm 42. The second is I'm a dad. <laughs> okay, so um, I thought, um, well, I'll say that the very first thing about this album that grates me is the fact that it opens with what sounds exactly like me getting a text message on my phone. <laughs> Every single time the album started, I was like, oh, wait, oh, no, it's this album. <laughs> and that really did annoy me. And, um, but ultimately, I thought it had... Actually, I didn't think the lyrics were that bad. I thought it had some, some fairly clever moves, lyrically speaking. I thought it was <laughs> clever very... Moves. Yeah, you don't think so? <laughs> like, just, name like, one. That- that description of lyrics is yeah, clever, clever moves. moves. Yeah, I just mean like like moving between different ideas and rhyming. That's what moves. Can you name one? Okay. Can you I name have actually, clever Yeah. So even from the first song, the muscle memory that it must take to stay close to me. I thought that was quite a good line. The muscle memory that it, that it must take to stay close to me. I thought that was quite good. Yeah. It's impressive he says it without messing up. Oh. Yeah. No, I think it's good. Anyway, so um, I saw a performance on YouTube, as I mentioned a minute ago. And then I realised what was so bugging about them, even though they had this lyrical stuff. And it is very similar to what you said, is that it's so clean, it's so plucky and sort of like cheery, even when it's saying something that's not that cheery. It's still like got this sort of smooth, sort of lilting tone to it, which is really grating. Mm. And, and, and have you seen the band, by the way? Because uh, you said they were 40s now. They, they do like them in their 40s, like all of them. Yeah, they, they do like, they're not like a super young band. No. You know, so um, in a way, it was kind of a, as somebody still makes music. I'm trying not to turn into that, <laughs> honestly. So <laughs> I can honestly say, so maybe I am doing, but who knows? But uh, that would look, that's not my goal to sound like as clean you, as sort of sound creamy. Like it's, like, it's just it's got no edge to it, and and that's that's unfortunate. Yeah. So, um, but yeah. Anyway, so no, I, I don't I don't love it either. Um, and it was yeah. Too so they're plucky. not even hitting their audience. And too literally plucky because, I mean, literally it was both cheery and they were just doing all this picking on notes on, mm. on both guitars all the time through every single song. Yeah. It's just too much of it, too much of it. And so. also, when you spoke about the lyrics before, I feel like sometimes they put it, there was like, it was witty in a way where it's like, not actually witty. Mm. Like it was forced, it felt right. very forced some of the, okay. and sort of like, a bit of a dad joke. Okay. Like, dad jokes as well. Yeah, there's something like, I used to blame my dad in my youth. Now, I, as a father, I blame the booze. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't think that was that bad a lyric. That's not I mean, a bad phrase. It's, it's not that good, though, is it? Is it? I mean, it's just not good. I mean, you can say it's not that bad, but... If, no. If, you, if you're going to put an bad. album out and we're going to talk about it and so your best found... lyric is rhyming booze with, with whatever, yeah. it's, it's done. So if we... Found another album that's worse than Abba for Friends. Can I just ask you? Is it as bad as the, these new Probably programs? not. 
Because, oh, okay. all right, there was slightly more redeeming features to this album than there was to these new Puritans for me, mainly because they didn't sing any songs that were solely about chemicals or fire. <laughs> Um, God. So I don't agree at all about the similarity right. between the music, though. I mean, these are the periods whether or not so. I'm not saying musically is in, in so the tone of the music. What I'm talking totally. about is the um, the all right, the emotional side of it, the actual yeah. content of it, the lyrical content, the the way the albums made me feel was yeah. identical because they both were very overblown. So there was a lot of similarities in that respect that were overblown. They were self indulgent. They were trying too hard. And yeah, it, it, they were shit. Yeah. Okay. And I think if you yeah. want to try, if you want to transition, you can easily go from self indulgence to Dave. <laughs> <laughs> so Lewis, why don't you start? And just raise that comment. So we're the last one is Dave before we get onto the wild love. So go for it, Dave. Psychodrama. Well, do you tell. I was really looking forward to listening to this album because I picked it. Because it's got a lot of good reviews. I've noticed by yeah, the way, whether we think of it. Loads it's a lot about of good him. I've heard loads of people talking about him being the British Kendrick Lamar. Really? And he's definitely not that. He's <laughs> <laughs> um, got nearly as boring a name. I mean, no, a more yeah, boring name, but that's about the only similarity, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Dave, Jesus. Um, yeah. Everyone out there is Dave um, now. I don't know. Everyone in the I was... <laughs> I, I was, saw half, half our fans got. <laughs> I was baffled by the fact that this felt I thought it was going to be much deeper than this they're like two tunes that are actually good mm. or I don't know if they're good but they try to do something yeah which are the tunes Black and guess. what and Leslie yeah. Uh, yeah try to do something although Leslie's like excruciatingly long and <laughs> didn't have to be that long I don't think and I'm I'm still not sure that I like the tune like, but I see what he's trying to do and at least he tries to do that mm. but I feel like we can draw a comparison to Saba you reviewed earlier yeah. from Prom King yeah. which is definitely a better tune than oh, yeah. Leslie but does the same thing it's long but it just progresses in a better way Prom King is one of, it's probably the best hip hop song that came out last year and it, and it progresses it's, it's, like, yeah, it progresses it's a lot yeah, yeah. This is, it this amps is, up all the way through doesn't yeah, it yeah. Yeah. yeah and I feel like delivery Leslie, wise and lyrically yeah. everything yeah. Yeah. Leslie yeah. does progress but it does it in a, with strings and like this heart fuck man this heart <laughs> it's just so <laughs> uh, I th- the, generally the beats and the, 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 the yeah the beats on this thing is just it's, it's sad piano music and um, I don't know and the song Black which has got some great lyrics on it sometimes mm. but I feel the way do you remember Nick you like Stuart Lee in it yeah I feel like um, it's been a massive when, digression right now when we're Stuart Lee you know when Stuart Lee goes um, oh, oh did you go to see Stuart Lee yeah was it good no, but I agreed the fuck out of it. That's half of this album. <laughs> With the true black. Like, yeah, I'm not sure I, I like so. it, but I agreed the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great... I mean, if it was a Twitter post or a Facebook post, I'd share it, whatever. But I don't listen song, to it, yeah. yeah I've listened to it for a month. Yeah. And I've got okay. some lows as well. The opening... Oh, shit, I forgot. He does this thing where he's got this actor talking as if he's just a psychotherapist yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're just digging into all of my points oh, sorry mate. it's alright you carry it's on so you're obvious, the guest like, that's so bad and, yeah, and the, bad. there's the opening song I didn't think it was that bad to begin with but then it goes switches up to this chopped vocal beat and it's just ah oh, it goes double time and it's got these chopped vocals and ah oh, I can't stand that at all he's in pain and the tune location is definitely the worst tune on this, mm. I think. Well, it's up there. It's got a <laughs> shit hook and it's got a saxophone, like <laughs> just doing shredding on the like side. Noodling. <laughs> yeah. There are a couple of things I will say that lyrically, a couple of things that, I mean, he's obviously a good writer. He can obviously write, write lyrics and he's witty because in he's got a link between two tunes where. In Screwface cap, uh, Capital, it goes. I got ninety nine out of a hundred marks in my English class. Uh, on my English questions, I'd get the same if I did it again, because I don't know the definition of resting. And then, and the last tune it does, I didn't get ninety nine marks in my English. In English, I was faking it because I got ninety eight. Because I don't know what a vacation is. So he like ties the tunes <laughs> between, oh, between together. The start yeah. the end. Right, right, I'm not right. sure that's like doesn't redeem it but it's like okay. it shows that he's got overview yeah. over the entire record 
And there's yeah. a one <laughs> as a Dane on the tune Disaster. I think it must be, it's J. Jay Hughes. Yeah, yeah, it says life's great in Sweden or Copenhagen. Getting brain from a Dane whose first name I can't pronounce, which I thought was quite a witty <laughs> line. And uh, right, personally, <laughs> well. Yeah, no, the audience may not know that Lewis is actually over from Denmark. Yes. Yeah, so, I'm half um, Danish. Yeah. And live in Denmark. Yes. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Fran. Do you want me to go? Um, oh, no, well, either one of us. Yeah, I mean, I've got mixed feelings on it. I mean, a lot of, again, me and Lewis seem to have suddenly formed Aligned, a really yeah. tight team. alignment. Because I've his note, he's just, I think he was reading my notes over my shoulder. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm probably not quite as as down on the album as a whole. Like, I do, I do think Black... And Leslie were pretty strong, um, but mixed feelings on the album as a whole. And I think, like, Black's a quite strong, intelligent song about black, you know, the black experience, which he he does really well. Despite, yeah, in some ways it's a bit too long and it's a bit long winded. And the same with Leslie is about domestic violence, but it's a bit long winded. But what I didn't get is how those two songs that were quite strong and really socially conscious. I didn't know how we could go from that to singing a song uh, called Streatham and talking about how jiggly a woman's front and behind are. Yeah. And songs about location, which is solely about taking women to his friend who can't leave his house because he's on probation. <laughs> and then I've actually... One thing me and Lewis might not agree is Disaster, where he t- talks about getting brain from a dame whose name I can't pronounce. I've actually written that line down as one that I fucking hated because... I just I did I wouldn't mind it in like a general hip hop if it was Dizzy Rascal or something a bit alright but if it's someone who wants to write a song like Black and Les he wants to write a song Leslie where he talks for the whole song about domestic violence and about women and it's a meant to, it's a, it is a positive song and it is a, you know a feminist song and then he talks about getting brain from a dame whose name he can't pronounce and I just I, think make your mind up the reason why I fell on that was I just thought it was a bit more witty than the other yeah it is that's why it is witty but it, and it is and it's just but it's about choose kind of what you're what kind of artist do you want to be in a way, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that just kind of grated on me really is that someone who can obviously, and not that I love the song, but he does speak out, it's in the type of music, it's not my favourite, but it grates on me that someone can speak about big issues in that way and then can be so blind to how problematic a lot of the rest of the album is. And then just on another point, which Lewis also mentioned, is that therapist, right? If, if you ever went to therapy and someone spoke to you like that, yeah. you would have to twat them. Because he's the most patronising bastard I've ever heard. And also doesn't sound like he's ever read a script before. I think he just picks someone off the street who's never read before. He's badly acted and he's, he's, he's a twat. But yeah, we and can... it's pointless. What's the point? Yeah, it's so pointless. It's trying to be a structure. So this is all about... But none of the songs fit with that. Yeah. It's, that it's all got like free tunes out this. about mental yeah. health, is it? It was, yeah, ridiculous. Uh, go ahead, Matt. Uh, yeah, I had mixed feelings about this. Like, I'm kind, of, yeah, kind of in a similar place to to Lewis and Fran. I, I, a lot of it, like a lot of aspects of it, I liked, and I liked listening to the whole album in general. It was better than some of the others. I just felt sometimes it didn't quite connect. And you could already talked about Saba and on reflection, like at the time, I wasn't taken completely by Saba, but like listening to that album more and having listened to other uh, albums like this since I think Sabo is way better at this kind of mm. thing but I can also like this is his first album and I can see he's trying to do something and he's doing a lot of like interest he has a lot of interesting ideas and I just don't think it was quite executed as well as it could have been like I, I, I like the idea of having like a, it being like a, a therapy session having this kind of concept album um, but uh, yeah, the message and the tone doesn't quite stay on point the entire way through to make it. Work. If you can have a concept album, you have to stick to the concept, don't you? Yeah, and, and it even do even that. it's even in some of the songs about just about his mental health, he fluctuates quite a lot in what mm. he's talking about, um, and so it's it's hard to have like a clear message, especially if a song is going to be like eight minutes long. Um, but that said, that yeah, there's some great songs. It's not eight; he it's can, like eleven. <laughs> <laughs> 11 torturous minutes but okay yeah, there's other people know. doing that I mean like Loyal Connor's latest album that's just come out um, Not Waving But Drowning I mean there's songs on that about his mental health and it's just so subtle and it's so he is yeah. a real storyteller and it's just like if you compare the two and they're both you know 
contemporaries. They're both coming out of a similar scene, and it's uh, it's just it's worlds apart. I think. Yeah, I I do also wonder if like it is kind of almost like the in thing to do right now is to talk about mental health, yeah, especially yeah, for yeah. male male rappers. And yeah. so I do, I don't know if which is not in itself a bad. Yeah, it's no, it's, thing, it's, it's obviously doing so, but it's obviously a fantastic thing to like. Yeah, yeah. rather than yeah, talking about. I know you're not, about, I know you're not arguing that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. If you just say the word depression and then pretend you've got a therapist for. Yeah, yeah. It just... seems like maybe maybe he went for went for the this is for the album sales. I don't know. Maybe that's me being really pessimistic. Yeah, pessimistic and skeptical. But it felt almost like that could be. Um. So okay, uh, I don't have a ton to say about this album. Um. Mostly, it's my perspective on it is that it was so sad that it came after listening to Lil Sims mm. last time in the last yeah. podcast because, in every single respect, the Lil Sims album and the Sabra album going back away and loads of other albums just destroy this album, just blow it out of the water completely, you know? Yeah. And that's really, um, I, I did also, like Matt's saying, I did feel like there was a purpose to what he was trying to achieve, that he had some themes he wanted to get across that were, had some weight behind them. Uh, it wasn't a complete waste of time in that sense. It wasn't all vacuous, although I think Franz Rai and, and Lewis Rai, there was a lot of oscillation between things that seemed to be weighty and things that seemed to be pretty frivolous. Mm. Um, but yeah, in terms of all the elements of, of what works in hip-hop from my limited understanding of it, in terms of the beats, the flow, the sort of reflective lyrics and that stuff, Lil Sims, just a month ago, um, just completely killed it. So mm. that that left me sort of feeling like, oh, this. I was I was I'm also kind of like, oh, this is the hip hop album we got on this playlist. This is gonna be, this is gonna be energizing and really. You know, I'm yeah. looking forward to this. And then it was just so um, flat. You know, it just just seemed pretty weak. So yeah. So I've got tons to add to that. Obviously, that's that's went well with name. the name Dave, didn't it? Really. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's good. Yeah. Whereas psychodrama maybe seems a little yeah. bit overstating. Yeah, it, but Dave, yeah, that works. Um, it just gets me mad. Did we miss you out for American football? Did I? Did I? No. Did no. we not? Okay. I, I, I thought I, it was I, crap. Oh yeah, you did. I, <laughs> I, 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 I thought we'd somehow managed to ignore that. I'm sorry. I no. uh, okay, so I think that's all the uh, the main albums. So no, can I say a last thing about the Dave thing? Yes. It's just it doesn't it doesn't bother me particularly that you do stuff that's like about how cool you are, about how many girls you get with or whatever. But you've got to wrap it in, like, that's why, obviously, Kendrick Lamar is such a legend, like, on, what's it, uh, Backseat Freestyle, mm. all that, that tune, it, out of context, that tune's shit, but in yeah. context, it fits perfectly, because right. it's sort of wrapped in, you know that he's just bigging up himself in front of his friends, Right. And, like, yeah. this is just pointless, yeah, 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 this yeah. album is just pointless. yeah. Well, like, as, like, as, as it's a first defense. album though to be fair as a first yeah, album yeah, yeah. you gotta give them some like leniency for that I mean you're comparing we're comparing Little Sims which is a, is it a second or third album fourth, fourth, fourth is it right yeah, okay so um, you know and, uh, I don't know though maybe, maybe I'm, yeah, I'm being generous that. but I just feel like there, there's what Matt's saying about this potential I think you were saying that use that word Matt uh, is maybe true well I think yeah. if we want to be, give him a bit of leeway is that he needs he, he needs to make a decision on what he wants to be he needs to like does yeah. he want to be because there's loads of rappers around who do just rap about yeah. you know cars and guns mm-hmm. and women and, and that's fine if that's there's an audience there's a big audience for that and that's fine but I think you need to sort of pick a camp because you can't have a really feminist song and then spend 19 songs talking about arses and then, <laughs> you just can't yeah. <laughs> and then get a new producer as well because I feel like the beats and a new name <laughs> and a new name and a new oh. therapist <laughs> <laughs> Can I say, I, I think, think possibly, with, with the inclusion of Lewis in this episode, we've possibly been the most cynical, most <laughs> yeah. nasty, most sure. mean spirited well, bastards yeah, I've ever seen in the 21 episodes of this podcast. That might be because of the podcast. playlist, because it was a yeah, yeah. fucking bad playlist, man. <laughs> I can't lie. It, it was, was a really bad playlist. Okay. Yeah. Which maybe we should address before just, we move on to Yeah, I'll just say that there are albums and music that the four of us actually like in the world. I yeah. just want to be clear on yeah. that, because I think maybe when people are like, oh, mm. they just slay everything. Well, but you know, every now and then we have a playlist that... For some reason, it seems to really like all be quite similar, yes. and like yes. we had the really soulful one, and then yep. we had I can't remember a few weeks ago we had one that was a few months ago we had one that was quite similar, all kind yep. of similar genre, and then this one was generally crap. So that was blown. Was that yeah, I, think, I think you're saying. I think you're saying. I mean, you're reasonably making that point in terms of Dave is overblown and too much, yeah. and American football is overblown too much, and these new Puritans is overblown too yeah. much. You know, so that's three out of out of five. I've got a very similar problem. 
Well, yeah. No. I don't know if that's overblown. Of course it's overblown. It's, it's terrible, but, but it's not it's overblown. It's overblown. They get, how excited can you get about any of the things they sing about? And they get really right, excited. You've had one, you've had one, all right? <laughs> Back, <laughs> off. Sure you. Back off, it's getting defensive now. <laughs> all right, anyone, so... Before we move on, because like we did used to do this all the time and we don't really anymore, but has anyone got a favourite album on this? Because I don't know if anyone's... I mean, mine's Lucy Rose, obviously, but has, yeah. does anyone else like... Me too, I reckon. Uh, Lucy, mine's... Lucy Rose is your favourite and you weren't like... Not even Abba. Well, obviously. Oh, other than Abba. So yeah, Lucy yeah. Rose is your favourite of the new releases, even yeah, though you yeah. didn't really like it that much. It Best sort of talks about the quality of yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with... Uh, oh, I don't know. Probably these new periods, I suppose. What? I don't really... No, it wasn't good. I don't, I'm not enjoying it, but it was a poor It was play. better than Lucy Rose. Uh, well, Lucy Rose was just Clearly. doing somebody else's music. It didn't feel like it was her music. At least it was music, though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, these new Puritans run away with it this week. Oh, my God. Not. I mean, I've just gone off Easy. both of you massively. <laughs> Could, is that possible? Really? Do you know what, as Any well? Further? Because these new Puritans were playing in the in the Trace Club in Hebden Bridge, which is oh, a right. venue that's like a two-minute walk from my house. Uh, and it was before I'd listened... To, and I just thought, oh, you know, I've, I've got nothing to do tonight. I'll yeah. go and watch them. Did you I go? Thought, oh, no, because uh, I had a quick listen to the album, oh, thinking, right. you know, I'll decide. Uh, and then I didn't. That would have been amazing. Yeah, a small venue. Yeah, quite interesting. Yeah. No, it would have been yeah. absolutely awful, wouldn't it? It was, it was poor, but yeah, I don't know. At least it was their own music. Right. Okay. Well, <laughs> on, to, uh, on to CTM. So, let's talk about uh, CTM. You need to give us some context and mm. also, uh, you know, why, why, you, why they matter to you, really. Yeah. All right. Why they should matter to us. So, CTM. and I just want to point out that Lewis has now put all notes away. He's just gonna wing <laughs> freestyling. He's just so chilled, never so confident. He's just like, let's just do this, right? Go on then. I like it, so I know I know why I like it. <laughs> I've listened to it loads of times. Okay, uh, it's CTM is a is a Danish singer and cellist. You, I know pers- uh, Well, I sorry, you threw me off of that. Oh. <laughs> It's a Danish singer and cellist who came out of the band Quiet Young Believers. You might know that because that's they the made the tune yeah. for Born, that Danish. Yes, uh, that's right. I know. That. I love that song. Hollow Talk. Yeah, that's a brilliant. Yeah, song. I was gonna do Quiet Young Believers, but then I sort of felt I was I actually I, the reason why I picked CCM was mainly because I didn't want to pick something. Look, mostly you've picked a lot of albums that are or a lot of artists that I like mm. already. Yeah. And I didn't want to just go with Arctic Monkeys because I used to love them a lot. But I just feel like I wanted to pick something you didn't Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's that's, that's, that's always good when we get a guest yeah. so I choo- So I chose a Danish artist. And she's not quite, she's not famous at all. Like, she's very small in Denmark still. Um, so she's, she's, um, she was the cellist in Quiet Young Believers. She uh, also played with Marching Church, who is the... It's, um, Don't know them. I know quite them. Project. You sent me some stuff quite on Young Believers and yeah. I've liked it. Yeah. Marching yeah. Church is a side project of the front guy of Ice Age, the okay. post-punk band out of okay. Denmark. No, Ice Age. Yeah, he's got a side project with called oh, Marching right. Church, which she's okay. in as well. And then she does the solo stuff as well. Um, and the reason why... This is a new album, quite a new album. It came out, I can't remember, October or something. And uh, I like it because I... Well, she calls her music sort of a collage, which I get when you hear it, you understand that. And it mm. takes a lot for me. It took a lot for me to get into it, to be fair, because there's not a lot of songs on it, really. It's very collage-like. Mm. I get yeah. that's <laughs> the best way to describe it, I think. Yeah. I think she's really good at playing with, um, with the mixture. Of, I think she's good at mixing up classical music and contemporary sounds and like she was she's a classical cellist to begin with mm. she's got that background but she's got like, a great understanding of like beats and sort of she's got this weird beats sometimes just emerge and slip out and um i don't know just like uh i just think the album works as a as a whole okay. i think it sticks i think it it's uh well rounded i think it's I mean, if it were if it were me, obviously I would probably want it to be more like song upon song upon song. But I'm happy that someone can make something like this, and I can still appreciate it as it is. I think the opening is fantastic, the opening tune is fantastic, and how does it compare to Quarry and Believers then? As I know you're a massive fan of that. Not a lot. 
quickly. No. Not really. No, I meant quality wise, not oh. not not oh. musically. Well, for you, you you this is come one way or the other. I'm not sure. They're so different. Okay. Like, okay. And she, did you discover this CTM because you knew Five Young Believers and um, she came out of them, or would, did yeah, you hear them in some sort of? I actually or... sort of know her personally. Obviously. Okay. I might name, I'll name, say that in the end. <laughs> I'll mention that later on. Rock and roll star. But yeah. She, but she's <laughs> like, um, yeah. I don't know. She just. I just think. I can't really compare the two really because the yeah. Quavo and Believers do tunes like actual tunes that you can just yeah. stick on. That song on on the if the bridge it is in yeah like, and that's one of those songs and it doesn't happen a lot for me but watching I love that series and watching the intro like I had to stop and go away and find out what that song was yeah. I love that song that much that I had to sort of go and look it up and then forgot what I was watching for a little bit and had to go back to it which was very annoying for the person I was with but I mean that's I, yeah so you I, should check out their own stuff yeah the early stuff is good Ryan Gold's a great album as well okay that's quite unbelievable but yeah I just think she does a good job of letting the music breathe as well because mm. okay. obviously it's not that lyric it's not heavy on lyrics at all and usually like I like artists who are really like heavy lyrically I've yeah. got I spit out lyrics all the time, but I just love the fact that she just lets the music breathe a lot. Mm. And like, it could be quiet for five seconds in this album, you think, oh, have I paused it? But mm. I, it's, per, I think it makes sense in the context. Yeah. And I think she's she's got a great sense of composition. She's got a great sense of knowing when to sort of, when to make it big, when to sort of, it's not, it's, it's I think what it does that, these new Puritans couldn't do is sort of um, it's not as self-indulgent it's not as it's not like oh we've got these strings might as well use them to stick 20 on and, and, <laughs> just, yeah. and yeah. then she really picks she really is re- clear cut decisions that I just want this string doing these three notes here yeah. and it's just like very controlled very controlled yeah. compositions yeah, 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 yeah. and I that. think they really take you on a journey if you can manage to listen into it but I right. think it is hard it took me a long well, to get into it properly. Okay. Well, annoyingly, Lewis appears to have actually very articulately outlined why he likes the band. And yeah. yeah. Here in fashion, so that's quite irritating to me, but never mind. Uh, Matt, do you want to make some comments on that? Yeah, I, I, I'm quite glad you made a little comparison to these new Puritans, because I think in the context of the playlist, it was nice having both of them being kind of trying to do similar things, but... Um, yeah, these new parents are obviously going for this kind of bombastic, weld-ending stuff. And this is very dif- different in the tone. Um, and I, I, I know you didn't like it. I meant it as a compliment. Uh, <laughs> I actually, I really enjoyed this. Um, and like some, it, I found it very, some of it was kind of atmospheric. What, and some of the albums we talked about were also atmospheric, but this was atmospheric and actually kind of drew your attention as opposed to just made me want to do something else. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I think what I really liked, what, a particular part I wrote down that I really liked is when she, I think it was on um, Diva, and she was using the, using the strings and then matching the strings with some like weird vocals that she had done something to. I mm-hmm. thought that was really cool and clever. Um but overall, yeah, I thought it was super, super cool and interesting to listen to. Yeah. Should I jump in? Go for yeah. it. Go for it. Um, yeah, in general, uh, I absolutely love this. I thought it was fantastic. Uh, I really, it was a fantastic to have such a fresh discovery on a playlist that otherwise uh, didn't really deliver for me, and, mm. you know, overall. Um, I thought it had uh, a lot of control, as Lewis was saying, um, a lot of, delicacy but still impact still emotive impact which is really important um there were some really left field decisions some kind of like out of nowhere like oh wow you're really gonna like on is it mina meno is it that's the song um this this piano comes in and towards the end of that song i just love the way it like moves so and this doesn't this is not drug at all but so incoherently in a way like so drifts in and out and like moves across this melody breaking apart all the time. I thought that was a fabulous move, you know, so I, I, I really, really loved it. Um, if I was to find a criticism, just for the sake of the fact that I'm a picky bastard, uh, I'd say <laughs> that there are moments in the album 
uh, where it becomes too relaxed almost. There's not enough tension all the way through. So some of the songs, that, one of the songs, Swarm, I think, is less effective than some of the others. It sounds too chilled almost because I want to have that intensity of the, the, the control, you know. Uh, but I can see like uh, how it's got like a, a sort of a portis head type mm. restraint to the way it plays through things you yeah. know like it's just like it has two notes here three notes here you know the weight of each of those notes is really impactful i thought that was great yeah so yeah i can't say enough good things about it really it was it was fantastic and not much to say but it was the favorite thing out of these six albums mm. <laughs> not, not not much of a big statement but still yeah frank go for it yeah so um it, for me it was a real sort of certain mood album very much like the first time I listened to this album, I had gone out for a walk just along the canal where I live. It was a nice day, and I just put this on as the first album I listened to on this playlist, actually. And, and my immediate reaction to this was like, wow, like I'm really going to love this album. It feels really fresh, it feels really interesting. It reminded me a little bit, only at times, but at certain times, of another Scandinavian artist I really like. I can't remember which country it's from, Agnes Abel. Um, Danish as well. Danish. Who, who I, Kirsten, my girlfriend's a massive fan of, I've seen her a couple of times, and there's elements of that, again, with the sort of classical mode with the con- contemporary, which I, really worked for me. But it, but there was other times when it was just a little bit too sparse for me and a little bit too sleepy at times when I when I kind it kind of passed me by a little bit. But there was that's two... That's what I mean, I think, with this lounge, the sort yeah. of relaxed tone of it. Yeah, yeah, but I think that's very much a mood thing. Um, and I've been listening to a lot of hip hop recently so like when I was going from stuff that I was listening to not on this playlist and then putting this on it was kind of no I need something a bit more energetic yeah but um, but there was a couple of songs that never sort of got got boring for me or got not boring is the wrong word but yeah. never sort of passed me by and that was Spender and uh, Stages mm. I thought they were both probably the two yeah. strongest songs on the album um, Spender's weird I mean I hope I've got the right to the one where it's talking about there's never going to be any babies there's never going to yeah, be yeah, any yeah. I'm going to spend all your yeah. money like it's weird I don't <laughs> know what it like it's a really sort of but that's what I loved about it is that she's singing these things that are all quite like well that's just a bit mean and yeah but it's just <laughs> kind of just the way she presents it in this such such a beautiful voice mm. and it's you know it's so mm. such a chilled song but she's just telling someone, look, if you're going to stay with me, then you're going to get used to the fact that I'm not going to do anything you want me to do. <laughs> and I thought that was really strong. Um, and yeah, in general, it was, a, it was something, and I think you, Lewis, made a good point about it being a difficult album in a way. And I think it's probably something that I need to go back to again at another time um, because it wasn't always the right move for me during this month with some of the stuff that I've been listening to and with lots going on. And it, But it was... It's certainly really interesting. And mm. now that I know that she's part of that, what is it, Cry of Young Believers? Yeah. yeah. And I've, like I say, I love that song and I kept meaning to go and listen to them more. So maybe what I'll do is go and listen to them and then yeah, go to sure. her from that. Because I think, uh, yeah, definitely interesting. Yeah, she's definitely yeah. she's definitely difficult to get into to begin with. Like, you nearly need to give it some listens. And it is very much, I can see what you mean with the mood album. Mm. Um, yeah. But I don't think that's ne- necessarily a bad thing. No, I don't mean it as a negative either. I think some music is, you know, even some of my so. favourite bands, even, you know, a band that you mentioned, Porter said Nick, and they're yeah. a band that I, I personally would only listen to in a certain mood. Yeah. There's loads, there's loads of my favourite artists. I mean, these, there's not much that I can just listen to at yeah. any time. There's a few. And I can but. say that I, I had a, as a teacher, which is why I know the it was written of, from like three perspectives. I think it was like, one of it was written. What I've heard of it was written to the Michael a Michael Jackson documentary before the scandal. Okay. Right. And the third of it was an Elon Musk documentary. That's the Red Dragon reference. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Oh, okay. All this, yeah, yeah. All the talking is about the Red Dragon project, which oh. Elon Musk was trying to. Uh, I don't know what it was. Inhab or get to get to somewhere. Mars. <laughs> Mars. Get to Mars. Get to Mars. Yeah, probably yeah. Mars. Yeah. And then he's trying to save people from caves with a submarine at some of the times yes, and he's just that was good yeah, yeah. yeah. anyway yeah. it's a high so, pressure yeah <laughs> and a little fun fact then I have actually been babysitted by her when she when I was a kid because she <laughs> was my mother's friend's daughter really yeah so she used to it's babysit just, me when I was a child it's a pretty risky business to put someone like that on because what if we all just slated it yeah, yeah. yeah. I know I mean I know. we didn't and no. it well, was I knew straight. she was good didn't yeah. it yeah you put good. That's confident 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 yeah. Yeah. Went and I didn't through. want to tell you till after you made yeah. an assessment because <laughs> <laughs> I make it biased I mean we're very yeah we don't really 
pulled back. So we would probably yes. be honest. Certainly anyway. haven't tonight. Anyway, but I, so, I've, yeah. I know a few people who are in, who are in bands that you know have got stuff, and I, I would I just wouldn't bring it to these guys because <laughs> like, <laughs> they got absolutely <laughs> slated. Yeah, 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 we put you on the podcast, but then we're all dicks about it. <laughs> so. The same reason I didn't put your album on the podcast yeah, yeah, and put yeah, yeah, Lewis yeah, yeah, So. It. All right, so we should finish up. Um, that was great, uh, and we all yeah. hated it, almost everything except for CTM. Yeah, yeah so I like really enjoyable. Uh, yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so we'll talk about next time. I am uh, not passing over now. Who's who's on next? I'll be hosting next time. Hosting is yeah, Fran. Fran. So uh, my two picks are uh, Local Natives, Violet Street, and uh, Deptford Goths, Muddy Dragon on the Road to Heaven. <laughs> and I just want to point out that I was vetoed in my original yeah. choice of yeah. Venom. I wanted to pick it out by Venom, but they told me it was too far, too long right, past. So we all talk about recent releases when we talk about these albums, and Nick wanted one from, like, I think it was 1942 no, or something. Yeah, no, yeah. No. So, it was from last year. Anyway, so if everyone, if anyone's a Venom fan, they should really you know, tweet us and tell us how wrong Fran is to tell me I can't use it. I mean, I'm really so. glad they got wow. it because it looks... Terrible. Oh, come on. Um, the Invincible we can, Black Metal, come on. We'll do the next one. Yeah, we'll, wait, I'll find, I'll find something. I'm going to find some Black Metal. We're Pick them as a classic. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll do. All right, so anyway, so Death of Ghost, Money Dragon on the Road to Heaven, and Local Natives, Violet Street. And Matt? Um, I've picked Pup with Morbid Stuff. So I said again, Pup, again, Pup, 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 Pup. With, with what? Morbid, morbid Stuff. Morbid, Morbid stuff. stuff. Okay, okay, sounds good. Uh, and then also Kevin Abstract with Arizona Baby. Heard it. It's good. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Matt. Not Thanks very we much. <laughs> um, okay, so for the classic, and I'm going to point out, I'm doing this 99% just because I want to annoy Nick for a moment, because Abba annoyed me, and Nick didn't choose it, but his brother did. Yeah, so I'm yeah, going to take out Nick. I'm going to go for my classic with Rihanna's Rated R. Um, also because I feel like I've got to get over my hatred of all things pop so I'm yeah. give it a go with Rihanna you had a chance this week I know you failed <sighs> this month. I'm happy I failed personally and yeah anyway, then, right, then I'll be telling you why I love I want to, I want to say love but I might say loved because I'm, I'm not sure that it still remains but I, there was a period of my life when I was completely obsessed with Tupac um, okay. to the point that I, I considered getting a fog life tattoo so I am going to come back <laughs> Next month, fully tattooed up, and I'm going to talk about why I love Tupac. Oh, so, I'm excited. Yeah. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah. so I just want to say thank you very much to Lewis. Yes, it was good to have you there. Yeah, yeah, thanks. To come into, coming into town to do this on, on short notice, that's great. And um, we'll see you again if you can come out back sometime, I guess. That'd be cool. Sure. Have you on again. Thanks for everything. Yeah. Um, and yeah, yeah, thanks for that selection. Uh, and, should we give Lewis uh, a bit of a chance to plug anything he would like to plug? If yes, Lewis, do you have you any have... musical projects you'd like to talk about? Yeah, sure. Um... I've got forgotten. a band called Sign of Laika who released we released two albums in 2018 they're both fantastic <laughs> <laughs> and you got a new single out the they're both better than these new Puritans yeah, yeah. they are definitely better than these new Puritans uh, one's called Sunstrip Black Pool came out in October that's the latest one and then we released a single this Friday or last Friday called yeah. Shark's Tooth um, which is also fantastic yeah it's, and it's sort of a switch up from our, our it is older a bit sound. darker bit darker, yeah. bit more full, bit okay. more uh, heavy. And you have another project. And I've got a hip hop project called Maroc, who recently released an EP. Which is M A R O C. Yes. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah. So right. look it up. Thanks, look we'll put some yeah. links on the social media and stuff anyway. Awesome. So we'll find them. All right, we should run. That's cool. great. Thanks very much for listening. And uh, go to pickybs.com and, listen, and uh, read us everything you can about us, please. Yes, we have many things to say. Exactly. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.